Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to present an update on Alzheimer's disease with focused ultrasound. My name is Suzanne LeBlanc, and I'm a neuroradiologist and the Director of Clinical Relationships at the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. Part of our job at the foundation is to keep our pulse on what's going on around the world. And starting in the late 2007 up to 2013, there were reports coming out in the preclinical world that focused ultrasound could open the blood-brain barrier. And then very interestingly, in 2014 and early 2015, two independent labs, one in Canada and one in Australia, came out with very similar results using focused ultrasound to open the blood-brain barrier in Alzheimer's disease models. So we thought this was very interesting. We really need to get these people together, convene the community, and figure out how we can get this into clinical trials. So we organized the first focused ultrasound for Alzheimer's disease workshop in 2015, and we invited the participants from these labs, as well as clinical experts in the field with neurologists and neurosurgeons and neuroradiologists, regulatory personnel, different manufacturers and nonprofits. And we sat down in a room to discuss these results and how we can formulate the first in-human clinical trial. While we were discussing that, we also stressed the importance of doing additional preclinical work. So although the initial results were encouraging in small animal models like mice, we knew we had to test it in larger animal models like dogs as well as sheep. So that process was progressing again at the same time. And I'm happy to report that even after the first workshop, which was in 2015, the results of the first in-human clinical trial with focused ultrasound in patients with Alzheimer's disease was published in 2018 in Nature Communications. And what they showed in from Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto was that in five patients, they could safely open the blood-brain barrier in the right frontal lobe in patients with Alzheimer's disease. And this was really important because we showed it was safe in these patients and we also showed that it was reversible, meaning we could open the blood-brain barrier and that it would close on its own. And in this picture, in these different five patients, the top row in A is their amyloid scans before the focused ultrasound procedure. B is the amyloid scans after the focused ultrasound procedure. And C is the MRI scan, which shows this small area of enhancement where we actually open the blood-brain barrier with the focused ultrasound machine. And what I think you can also appreciate is that there's a lot of amyloid in this right frontal lobe. You can see it's colored red. And after the focused ultrasound procedure, a few weeks later, you could see that there's decreased uptake there, meaning there's less amyloid. So even though this was only a safety study, the results were very encouraging that we could possibly decrease the amount of amyloid in patients with Alzheimer's disease. But we needed to do more. So additional clinical studies then said, well, Let's open up the blood-brain barrier in a part of the brain where there's more amyloid, and that's more important for Alzheimer's disease, like the hippocampus. So then this study came out of West Virginia University, and you could see here inside the red circle the area of enhancement where they were able to successfully and safely open the blood-brain barrier in the hippocampus. So now there were two studies that were able to safely open the blood-brain barrier in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, another company that makes a focused ultrasound device did a study with Alzheimer's disease patients, and they also showed that there was the ability to decrease amyloid on PET scans in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So now we have multiple locations doing studies with reproducible results and with different machines. In order to build on this now, we said, you know, maybe we need to open larger areas of the brain and over multiple sessions to know that it can be reproducible. So then this study came out of South Korea, which showed that larger areas of the frontal lobes could be opened with MR guided focused ultrasound and on multiple sessions, a few months apart. So they showed that this was in fact safe, no serious adverse events, and again, demonstrated that there was some decrease in the amyloid on these PET scans. So now that's great. We can open the blood-brain barrier in different areas of the brain and at multiple times. But the holy grail may be, can we open the blood-brain barrier? We can decrease amyloid a little bit, but what happens if we add a therapeutic, add a drug to it, and get increased delivery of drugs to these areas to help improve the outcome of patients with Alzheimer's disease? So while these clinical studies were going on, preclinical studies were also progressing. And there were two in particular that were really interesting. 
In this one, they studied the effects of adahelm with scanning ultrasound on amyloid plaques in an Alzheimer's disease model. And what they showed was that scanning ultrasound alone and adahelm alone were able to decrease plaque in the brain. But if you did the two together, if you did scanning ultrasound, open the blood-brain barrier, and do adahelm, that you had a substantial decrease in the amount of plaque formation. So you could decrease the plaque. They also showed a robust improvement in spatial memory. And they showed that we were able to deliver five times the amount of adahelm in the tissue where they did it with focused ultrasound compared to just areas with the adahelm alone. And in these pictures, you can see that the microglia, the cells that come in and eat up all the amyloid and take it away, overlap in the exact areas where there's plaque formation and the adahelm was delivered. So these were really promising results. Another lab confirmed these findings and showed that they could deliver three times the amount of aldehelm to the hippocampus when delivered with focused ultrasound compared to just the aldehelm alone. It also was shown to restore cognitive impairment in these preclinical animal models and decrease the amyloid plaque. So now we've showed in clinical studies we could open the blood-brain barrier safely and in preclinical models that we can add a delivery of a therapeutic and improve drug delivery and outcomes. So now we're ready for clinical trials. So you can see here from this chart, I tried to summarize all of these findings. So going from the bottom to the top, you can see that the earlier studies opened a small amount of blood-brain barrier opening. And as you move up larger areas of blood-brain barrier opening, you can see from the bottom, they did maybe one or two treatments and now they're doing multiple treatments over several months. You can see from the bottom, we started in the right frontal lobe, and now we're moving into additional areas like the hippocampus and the precuneus and bilateral treatments. Multiple machines are in the space. And in this study that's over here, you can see that they added a drug. Initially, it was Adahelm, and now it's switching to Lequembi. However, what they showed was that the focal areas of amyloid deposition we're decreasing in these cases, okay? That's fantastic. In this top study, it's interesting in that when we opened the largest area of blood-brain barrier opening to date, there was also a decrease in the amount of amyloid throughout the brain. So somehow maybe these microglia are getting activated to not only act locally, but they're activated and then can start to act on the amyloid elsewhere in the brain. What is an also interesting finding in this chart is highlighted in yellow in the cognition column. In these studies, there was no drug administered, only in this study over here. Yet in these studies, the cognitive outcomes demonstrated that there was some improvement in the CGA NPI score, the caregiver administered neuropsychiatric inventory score. So there is some suggestion that there may be early efficacy of improving cognition. In the other studies to date, there's been no significant change in the more objective scales of cognition, likely because of the small volumes that are opened. We're very excited about starting a larger study with opening the blood-brain barrier in larger volumes of tissue and in additional areas of the brain. So it turns out in this first in human study where they opened the blood-brain barrier with focused ultrasound and delivered Adahelm, the reports were just published in the New England Journal of Medicine earlier this year. And you can see here from this chart here that the mean change in the uptake on the amyloid scans was almost stagnant with just the adahelm alone, but there was a decrease in uptake on the scans after the adahelm, or I'm sorry, in areas where the adahelm was administered in combination with the focused ultrasound. So again, there was a reduction in the amyloid in the regions targeted with focused ultrasound more so than in the contralateral homologous regions that were not exposed to focused ultrasound. Now, in this issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, Kalervo Heinenen, who's a very prominent researcher from Sunnybrook, was asked to write the science behind the study part. And he nicely summarized the result of Dr. Rezai in these pictures over here, where you can see that the areas in green with dots were areas of the blood-brain barrier that were targeted to be opened. And you can see here in the amyloid scan that the red are all areas of increased amyloid deposition. They were able to successfully open the blood-brain barrier with these 
areas of gadolinium enhancement that are manifested as white dots here. And the blood-brain barrier did successfully close after 24 hours, which is what we want. But look at what happened at the 26-week follow-up. The amount of red dots here, the amount of amyloid in the targeted area of the brain is substantially decreased compared to the contralateral side. So when we give the drug Adahelm, it goes everywhere in the brain a little bit, not a lot, but because we were likely able to increase the delivery to the area through the sonication of blood-brain barrier opening, more amyloid was able to be released and excreted from the body. Another visit, another researcher, Hergen Getz, that did a lot of the preclinical work, wrote a commentary in Nature Reviews on this same article by Dr. Rezai. And he kind of summarized the field in a very interesting way. He mentioned that focused ultrasound alone has a mechanism of action as shown in preclinical models to have different bioeffects and improve cognition. Focused ultrasound with microbubbles and opening the blood-brain barrier alone has a different mode of action and can activate these microglial cells that are like Pac-Mans that can come up and digest the amyloid. That can be helping uh, these patients. And also now opening the blood-brain barrier for the drug delivery like the Adahelm, which targets the, the amyloid itself. So there's probably multiple mechanisms of action that are happening at the same time to improve the amyloid and hopefully improve the cognition. And this researcher has just started the first in human trial doing just the scanning ultrasound alone to test what happens in these patients to see if this mechanism of action demonstrated in red here can have uh, an effect on the amyloid or how much as well as potential clinical outcomes. Now, what's also interesting about this is scanning ultrasound alone without blood-brain barrier opening could have a really interesting effect in terms of it being a neuromodulatory effect. Now, neuromodulation is a different mechanism of action. We're not opening the blood-brain barrier. But some other things are happening when you do the focused ultrasound that could potentially improve the outcomes in these patients. So it turns out there are a bunch of clinical studies that are going on with neuromodulation in Alzheimer's disease, and they're shown here. Some of them involve just a neuromodulatory mechanism of action alone without microbubbles, and some of them are using microbubbles but without blood-brain barrier opening. There are various companies in this space. They're targeting the uh, hippocampus, which is always very involved with Alzheimer's disease. Some of them are doing the session only once. Some of them are repeating them multiple times. But interestingly, in terms of cognition, doing neuromodulation has been shown in clinical studies to improve memory, improve recall, improve some of the scores like the MMSC score, executive functioning and memory. It can suppress the cognitive decline in patients. And you can see here in one of these studies by uh, the company Soundwave Innovation, they had a placebo group, which did not get low intensity focused ultrasound neuromodulation and one that did. And you can see the change in the ADAS score kind of stayed more stagnant in the patients that received the neuromodulation with focused ultrasound versus the placebo group. So these results are really encouraging. So overall, now we have multiple areas throughout the world doing clinical studies. Those in red are doing it with blood-brain barrier opening. Those in green are also doing it with neuromodulation. There are eight companies in the space using different types of machines. Some are MRI-guided, like the Insight Tech machine. Some are actually implanted in the skull, like the Carthera machine. And numerous are neuro-navigated meaning that you perform an MRI scan at a certain time, upload the scan in, an, in a computer interface, and then using optical guidance and neuronavigation, you can move the transducer around the patient's head, superimposed on the previously performed MRI scan to target the areas of interest. So again, there are eight companies in the space and 15 clinical studies that have either been completed or are ongoing. So what does the future hold? How about more blood-brain barrier opening with drug delivery? Can we deliver amyloid and even anti-tau antibodies? How about immunoglobulins like IVIG? It's been shown in preclinical studies that these immunoglobulins in Alzheimer's disease models can promote neurogenesis, increase memory, and decrease amyloid. Also, medicines like GSK3 inhibitors, which prevent amyloid formation, track A medicines that enhance cholinergic function and promote neurogenesis, improve memory, and reduce plaque as well. And how about gene therapies? We have a whole program at the Fuss Foundation to uh, research how we can deliver gene therapies because this would be game-changing. We could do one delivery and a one-time treatment to hopefully affect 
the patients and treat them. Another interesting avenue that we may explore is how can we test which drugs can get across the blood-brain barrier most efficiently? So there are these in vitro blood-brain barrier opening models that will help us bridge the gap between fuss mediated drug delivery in animal models and successful clinical therapeutic outcomes. We can really study drug treatment screening and even genotypic changes in a specific manner. So we're going to look into this option as well. So the FUSS Foundation, you know, we convene the community to help expedite the process to hopefully get these treatments to patients because it's all about the patients. In 2022, we had an Alzheimer's disease session at our large symposium. We also had two webinars with focus ultrasound and Alzheimer's disease and the future of medicine, aging and longevity in a post COVID world. In 2023, we had that dedicated AD workshop and we are trying to answer these fundamental questions such as what focused ultrasound parameters should be studied for BBB opening and neuromodulation, which ones are most effective? What should be the inclusion criteria for the upcoming studies, patients with mild AD, moderate or severe AD? What therapeutics could be added to focused ultrasound, blood-brain barrier opening for AD like we discussed? And what outcome measures should be standardized so we can compare results across the different manufacturers? In 2024, I'm proud to say we have a $10 million neurodegenerative campaign going on. And to date, nearly 170 patients have been treated in clinical studies, over eight manufacturers, and the FUSS Foundation specifically has funded clinical studies as well as preclinical studies in this space. So thank you for your attention. I hope you're as excited about using focus ultrasound in Alzheimer's disease space as I am, and I'd like to answer any questions. Thank you so much.